Hey, welcome investors to the 40 Finance channel. If there's a bright side to the stock market downturn that we're seeing here in 2022, it's that the prices of some very, very good stocks have come down dramatically over the past couple months. Now, of course, stock prices dropping by themselves isn't always the best indicator of value. And that's why it's helpful to use benchmarks like Morningstar Fair Value as you're going through this downturn to try to figure out which stocks are trading below their intrinsic or fundamental value for the long term. So for today's video, we're going to jump into Yahoo Finance Plus. We're going to use their stock screener to look for stocks that are trading under Morningstar fair value to try to find some deals. And before we jump in, shout out to our sponsor, which is Yahoo Finance Plus. As we're going through the video, you're going to see the stock screener and the fair value data. That's all part of the Finance Plus subscription. And Yahoo has given us a special offer for 40 Finance viewers, 40% off of your first month. This is in addition to the 14-day free trial. So if you like some of the data that you see here and many other tools that are included with this subscription, make sure you check out the special promotion link in the description of this video. Okay, so real quick, how we get to this screener, I just go to the Save Screener right off of the main menu in Yahoo Finance. You can see I have several of my own screeners saved, but what we're going to use is one of their pre-populated ones down here, and we're going to use Morningstar 5-star stocks. Now, if you're not familiar with Morningstar, they run a five-star rating system, and all that data is imported into Yahoo Finance Plus through a special partnership. And a five-star stock is basically one that is trading well below their Morningstar fair value. Now, I have found myself that four stars are, are equally as good. It also indicates a stock that is trading under fair value. So I'm going to include four and five star stocks in my screener today. All right, scroll down here a little bit and I'm gonna sort by market cap. Uh, just for me, that makes it easier because sometimes you get penny stocks and, and small cap stocks that I'm not really interested in in this uncertain environment. And I wanna cover some of the big names so that you guys can take advantage uh, of any opportunities that you see here. And right off the bat, we've got some juicy names to look at uh, trading under fair value. So Microsoft, Google, I'm just going to go through this uh, 25. I said we had 25 stocks. We actually have more than that. Uh, you have 378 estimated results. But let's just cover the top 25, and then we'll dig into some of the big names. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Taiwan Semi, uh, Tencent, JP Morgan, Visa, Roche Holdings, uh, MasterCard, Alibaba, Disney, ASML, Comcast, Adobe, Merck, Intel, Salesforce, Wells Fargo, Novartis, AMD, AT&T, Philip Morris, and Medtronic. So that's the quick list of 25 when you go in order of market cap. Now, in order for us to see what the fair value is, we're going to click on each stock. So let's load up Microsoft here. And you can see this one started at 334 back in January. Uh, and Morningstar gives them a rating of $352. Uh, economic moat of wide, which is important, of course, if you're worried about competition and what that might do uh, to a stock's future. So Microsoft today at 273 you know, that's $75 off of their Morningstar value. And perhaps more importantly, uh, on my quick math, that's about 20% below fair value. So you don't even need Microsoft necessarily to outperform here over the long term uh, to even have the potential to get a 20% gain. And real quick, I just want to touch on the Morningstar fair value estimate because it's different than an analyst price target. It tells investors what the long-term intrinsic value of a stock is, helping them see beyond the present market price. And then we have this highlighted portion, Morningstar calculates fair value of a company based on how much cash we think the company will generate in the future. When determining fair value, Morningstar takes into account the predictability of a company's future cash flows, which they call the uncertainty rating. 
A stock with a higher uncertainty rating requires a larger margin of safety before earning a four or five star rating. And then bottom line here at the end, Morningstar Fair Value Estimate is a measuring stick for determining long-term intrinsic value. All right, let's go back to our chart here. Uh, we'll just use the first Google. Let's see how they're trading over the past, uh, since January. We have a price of 2,900 back in January. Today you're at 2,545, Morningstar fair value of $3,600, economic moat of wide. So very strong price being offered right now on Google. All right, next on the list is Amazon. Started the year at 3,400. Now you're down to 2,700. Fair value of 4,100, economic moat of wide. So right off the bat, guys, we've got three very strong stocks with three very strong ratings from Morningstar. All right, next up, we have Facebook or Meta. Started the year at 338. Now you're down to 192 after the last earnings report. This one actually gets a five-star rating, meaning today's price as it relates to their fair value is one of the best deals on the market. Another economic moat of wide for Facebook. So this is our first five-star rating from Morningstar. All right, next we have Taiwan Semiconductor. They started the year at 128. You're down to 99. This is another five-star rating from Morningstar. Fair value of 179 economic moat of wide. And I do think it's important to throw out an asterisk on TSM because I recently sold out of this stock at the 115s or something like that. And it's mostly because of what happened in the Ukraine. Uh, so there was a lot of rumor mills going around about what would China do uh, as far as potentially invading Taiwan uh, now that they see how Russia's approached Ukraine. I don't know how much traction there is to that thought process at all, but considering how much we've all lost in the market, I decided to exit TSM with a gain. There is no debate, however, that they are the top semiconductor company in the world. All right, how about JP Morgan Chase? Started the year at 161. Now you're down to 129 in a year where, let's be honest, a lot of analysts are predicting good things for the financials market. Uh, you've got a four-star price today, fair value of 152, another wide on the economic moat. All right, next we have Visa. Uh, looks like they started the year at 221. This is a stock that I own. Uh, my cost basis, ironically, is $190. And they've, they've had some travel concerns because cross-border travel is a big part of what they do. They did reach a peak at 235, but now with gas prices and international conflict, they've dripped back down to 190. Morningstar gives them a four-star rating and a fair value of 221 and another economic mode of wide. And in the same category as Visa, we have MasterCard. Trading at 315, they started the year at 370. They get a four-star rating, fair value of 369. Economic moat looks good. How about Alibaba? They started the year at 120, actually peaked out, it looks like at 137. Today you're at $99. It's been a rough road for Alibaba over the past year or so. Morningstar puts their fair value at 188 and gives them a five-star rating. So they are the second stock we've looked at to get the five-star rating. Next, we've got Disney, kicked off January at 156. You're at 132, despite a very good uh, Q4 earnings report where they noted that the uh, profitability of the parks is coming back together. Uh, Morningstar gives them four-star rating, fair value of 170, uh, and goes without saying, I think, economic mode of wide for a company with that much intellectual property. And I like Disney. I've been watching this one for a while. It is attractive to me at 132, mostly because these travel stocks like Disney, uh, which make a nice chunk of revenue from travel, they're getting killed on gas prices, and they're also getting killed on the international conflict. Uh, so this could be a time, if you've been thinking about ever owning Disney, to potentially get in 
while the future over the next two to three years, guys, it looks very good for this company. All right, how about Adobe getting into a software name? Adobe kicked the year off at $564. They're down uh, roughly $130. And we've got Morningstar, fair value of $630, and a four-star rating and another wide economic moat to deal with. So I think what's amazing to me as you see this pattern develop here, you know, these are not uh, speculative names, right? Names like Adobe, basically everybody we've covered so far, these are quality stocks that are on sale right now. And assuming that you have a longer term horizon, you should be able to make a good return off a company like Adobe, because despite all the challenges that are going on right now, the fact of the matter remains that, uh, you know, very few of them uh, really apply to what Adobe's doing in the software market. Sticking in software, let's take a look at Salesforce. Kicked off the year, 255. Now you're down to 193. Got another five-star rating here for Salesforce. Fair value of 320. Economic mode of wide. You know, there's a lot of argument that if you're ever going to get in this one, uh, this could be one of the best stretches to do so. Okay, we'll finish off the list with a couple chip stocks. Intel, start of the year at 53. They didn't come down a lot. They're down to 47, but they've sort of had a bumpy ride over the past two years. And, and there's a lot of excitement for the potential of Intel going forward. Morningstar certainly appears to be in that camp. They give it a fair value of 65. Current price is a four-star price. Uh, another good economic moat there. And the tailwind, honestly, right now with Intel is, is really just them being an American company. So the government has recognized how much we depend on Asia for our chips, and they've given Intel some friendly terms. You know, right here in Ohio, where I live, they're opening up a new factory. And I would say that, you know, the prospects of Intel working with the U.S. government to build more chips in this country uh, looks very strong, and it's happening right now. So if you've got a couple years uh, to wait it out, you know, Intel's not a bad buy today, and it seems like an even better buy as we get closer to their expansion plans. All right, last one here is AMD. They started the year at 150. You're down to about 105. Four-star price of 130. Interesting to note that their economic moat is considered narrow. That's probably because they're a fabless uh, chip designer, so they don't produce uh, their own goods. They pretty much own the patents and the design uh, for it. But you know what's interesting about AMD is this stock is not struggling. Uh, they've had a great year in terms of product announcements, earnings reports, etc. And we're only in March right now. So to be able to come in here and see this price at 105, uh, you'd have to feel pretty good about it when you compare it to the fair value. Certainly from a long-term perspective, uh, when you think about how important chips are uh, to everything we seem to do in this world. Okay, guys, so that was a rapid-fire list of stocks that are trading well below their fair value, according to Morningstar. And these kind of prices make it a lot easier to be a long-term investor, right? We don't know what the next three months looks like in terms of Russia, inflation, interest rates. But when we think about companies like Google, JP Morgan, AMD, you know, it's better than not likelihood that they are going to be here in five years and not only be here, but compound their profits in the same time. I, for one, am real big right now on the QQQ, which I think most of those names we covered are in there. Uh, you know, so many stocks are on sale in the QQQ when you think about fair value. And I'm just trying to get a small piece of all of them instead of worrying about picking out the onesie twosies who may outperform the others. All right, guys, let me know which stocks you like out of that list we just covered. Don't forget to check out that Yahoo Premium Plus offer in the description phenomenal website and you can add a lot of great tools to your investing research while saving some money at the same time. Thanks as always for watching. Please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you on the next one.